Hello and welcome to the video. I've been drawing this donkey with my patrons on my Patreon channel recently, but for today's video, I just want to share my process and the stages that I go through when I'm building up a very soft, fluffy fur texture like on this donkey when I'm drawing on watercolor paper. So here's a very short extract from the tutorial where I'll take you through my stages step by step. I hope you enjoy. How do you start to put in fur in an expanse like this? Well, basically I start by putting the coverage over and the cover here was the, the really lightest layer that I could see. So I think I put Burns Oak 10% down. That's sort of step one. Step one is to find the lightest color, even if you could see a couple of colors. So for in here, in here, for instance, I can certainly see around here, there's a bit more of like the burnt oak, uh, sorry, the brown oak at 10%. And then around here, you've got colors that are a little bit more like the burnt oak at 10% and even perhaps that burnt sienna 10%. So it could be that I need to put a couple of base layers down. I know I've sort of put it all over, but I have been mixing those base layers as I was putting those base layers down. You may, you know, maybe just one, color isn't enough. I don't always have to, if I can see more than one sort of highlight in there, I can put different colors in different places, that's fine. So that's sort of step one. Step two is for me to then plot in what I consider to be uh, landmarks, what I call the landmarks. And they are the bits, so for instance, we've put these bits in. Uh, that would be one of the landmarks. You know, I would look for other landmarks too. They are the bits that jump out at me. So they are just, as soon as I look at it, I'm just drawn to them. Obviously, I'm drawn to these darker bits here. So they're the bits that I will use as my landmarks. And the reason I use them as landmarks is because I am drawn to them. It means I can spot them on the reference photograph quite easily um, as I keep looking back towards the reference photograph. So that's why I use them as landmarks because they're quite easy to find when you're looking at the reference photograph. Um, they're quite, quite perhaps distinctive shapes. You know, you can just really recognize them quite easily. They're the areas that I would use as my landmarks. So that's step two, I will plot those in. Step three is to then go and find uh, colours that I would use as the midtones. So again, as I've looked at the reference photograph and I've seen the lightest colours, I'll go to sort of the next level of colour and look for some uh, some midtones. So in this one, for instance, I started to put in the brownish beige, that sort of colour, those sorts of colours. And I will put those colours where I can see those colours, but look to sort of, again, we're almost going back to like the base layer coverage, the full coverage so that I can um, start to build areas up. If I start to lose these landmarks, then I'll have to think about, you know, putting those back in to make sure I don't lose them because they're obviously going to be important. So that's step three to then build up those, um, those mid-tones. Now, it could be that I have to repeat step three several times, you know, putting those mid-tones in and maybe going back in and refining the landmarks if I'm losing them for as many layers as it takes. For as long as it takes, I need to go over step three. And that is, and not always with the same color either, I'll just bring different colors in depending on what I'm looking for. Now here I'm looking for a little bit of texture, but I'm also looking to have it soft. I'm looking to keep it soft. So I'm not necessarily looking to put much texture in. I'm putting a little bit of texture as I go through this stage three, uh, but it's more a case of getting the, um, the balance of the colors um, and also all the time, always thinking about those lights and those darks, always thinking about those lights and those darks. I will come back and I'll make things a bit darker as I need to, as I go through, but I'm always thinking about those lights and darks so that I don't make an area too dark that needs to be lighter and vice versa. So I'm always thinking about that. I'm also at this stage, particularly when I'm drawing fur like this, I'm thinking about the direction of the, the fur, the direction of that uh, texture and the direction of that fur, which isn't quite so important on the base layers because of course it's gonna be covered up. I do think about uh, the uh, direction on the base layers, 
not it's not so important for the final sort of results in terms of texture of the fur but i find that it is important because it helps me to plot directions it helps me to sort of plot things out and then i'll be able to see whether i have made a mistake and of course if i have made a mistake and um it's on a light base layer it's going to be much easier for me to correct that so so that's the reason that i do think about directions with base layers um, obviously you know a lot of it's going to be covered up and you can put the direction after but i think it's a good habit to get into because it just helps you to start plotting things out it helps you to start just sort of working out what you're going to want to put where working out where you want to start to curve the fur for instance um, so that like I say that's step three and I will just repeat keep repeating step three step four from there will be to either go back and refine and add some of these darker bits in if it's needed obviously that is sort of part of step three anyway and then after that I'll think about blending I'll think about bringing together what I've put down and step four, again, I might need to repeat a few times. So I'll just finish this little bit and then I can explain again and I can just sort of show you step four. I'm just going back in, as I, as I said, as part of step three, I'm just going back in and making sure some of these landmarks and some of these darker bits are in. And I'm bringing in a bit of that texture into that fur. I'm going to come in and I want to blend this neck and just soften it down. I'm going to use a paper stump and I'm just going to bring this together with very light pressure. I don't want to use this paper stump. I don't want to scrub and scrub that pigment in. If it's not working with really light pressure, I would just leave it and I would go on and do something else. I wouldn't say to myself, okay, I'm using I'm using light pressure. You can see I've got my hand down on the table and I'm sort of using the side of the paper stump. That is actually a clean paper stump. I've uh, cleaned it off. It's just, it gets a bit stained, but it is clean. I um, So I'm just using the side of it. If at this stage the paper stump wasn't working, and of course it won't necessarily work on all papers and it won't work on all pencils, um, it won't work with all pencils but if I was getting to the stage where uh, if I was trying this and it wasn't working um, at, with using this really really light pressure I wouldn't I definitely wouldn't go in and start scrubbing harder if it's not going to work with really light pressure it's just not going to work and scrubbing it you're only going to make it worse you're going to make probably really harsh lines you're going to flatten it out uh, you flatten the pigment out it's just not going to look nice but you see this on this paper using the pablos and the luminance this is just blending out really nicely once I've blended with, um, whether I'm blending with the pencils, the paper stump, paintbrush, cotton bud, whatever it is. So that was, what step was that? I don't know, was that step four, I think we were on the blending stage. Uh, the next stage that I would do, I will always go back over and refine that blend a little bit with a pencil. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna come in, I'm coming back in with this brownish beige. Come over and just refine that blend a little bit. Um, and I I, pretty, I do this all the time. I can't think of a time where I don't do this. I mean, you know, there might be an odd time, but on the whole, I always come back in and blend it with a pencil. And it just smooths out the blend. Adds a bit of interest again. Sometimes a blend, especially if you're blending quite a lot um, quite large areas sometimes a blend can come a little bit flat so I just find by going back in with the pencils it just stops things looking a bit flat I'm sort of blending it so I'm going over where this blend was but I'm actually just putting a little bit of texture in as well but I don't want to put too much texture into this because like I say I want this to be nice and soft just bringing this fur down I want to break up 
the edge of these landmarks a little bit. I will go back in and darken these down. These steps that I'm explaining um, is pretty much, they're pretty much the steps that I will do for all, um, you know, all of the fur drawing really. Um, yeah, I might have to go over certain steps again. I might have to, you know, repeat things, but it's pretty much the same sort of process. Just tweaking it for whatever is being drawn. Always get a base layer down. Always look for the landmarks and put those in. Always start to bring up, uh, put in those mid-tones. Re-put in and redefine those landmarks if I'm losing them, you know, when you blend. So repeat that as much as you need. Blend it. And if I've used something else to blend it, then I'll still go and blend it again with the pencils afterwards. And it's it's important that I always make sure that the the length of the fur, the length of the pencil strokes represents the length of the fur that you can see on the reference photograph or that you know would be the length of fur for that animal. And so that it looks realistic. Okay, so that's it. Here's the final portrait. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like before you go. And if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications before you leave. Thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you next time.